Hello fellas. Welcome back to Top 5 Choices. This is Haley from Top 5 Choices, and I hope you all are doing good. In today's video, I am going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best Android phones, 2022. After doing proper researches, we came to the conclusion that meets the best in terms of overall. Kindly leave a like if you find this helpful, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications if you haven't. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use it for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. We'll be back with more videos. Google is pretty proud of the Pixel 5a's display, calling it the biggest one ever on a bezel-less Pixel, which covers the Pixel 4a, for a 5G, and 5. At 6.43 inches, the Full HD OLED screen on the Pixel 5a is vibrant and bright. It's not the most impressive panel we've ever seen, but it's very good all the same, especially at this price. One thing I really appreciate is how easily I can see what's on the display when I'm out in direct sunlight. When I was out wandering around to capture photos for this Pixel 5a review, I found myself surprised and impressed because I could see the photos I'd just taken. Normally, I have to find shade to see the photos clearly enough. Not so with the 5a, and not every phone that crosses my desk can claim that. Like the rest of the phone, the Pixel 5a's display gets the job done. Neither awful nor amazing, the screen is average in the best kind of way. One area that has definitely improved over the Pixel 4 is the viewing angles. With the 4a, you'd start to notice distortion pretty quickly when viewing the phone from an off angle. I ran into no such problem with the Pixel 5a. In fact, the display has fantastic viewing angles and little visible distortion until you get to closer to 180 degrees, as you do with most phones. Once you go with an OLED screen, it's hard to go back to LCDs on a phone. That comes down to how deep the blacks get, which lends itself to a sense of foreboding and dread in dark games like Limbo or adding stark contrast to the harsh orange scenes in Blade Runner 2049. Even Genshin Impact with its anime-style graphics or Dead Cells pixel art look amazing on the Pixel 5a. The resolution is just crisp enough to make nature photos almost look like you're actually there, too. Even something as mundane as a YouTube video or sports clip looks great on this display. The biggest highlight with the Pixel 5 of this year is the addition of the 16MP, 117-degree ultrawide camera which joins the primary 12.2MP shooter. Last year's Pixel 4 a only had the single 12.2MP camera. Up front, the Pixel 5 AS 8MP selfie cam sits nestled in the top left corner of the display in a hole punch cutout. The night modes differ greatly between the two phones, mostly because the iPhone SE doesn't have one. This remains a strange omission on Apple's part, but the Pixel 5a features Google's excellent night sight. You can see how well the 5a handled the smoker at night, producing a clear image, with plenty of detail. The smoker is still visible in the iPhone SE's photo, but it's harder to see. The most noticeable change in the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE 5G compared to its predecessor is its design. This phone looks like an extension of the Galaxy S21 series, thanks to the contour-cut shape of the rear camera module. However, unlike the S21 series, the cladding around the cameras is plastic and not metal, and it doesn't extend from the metal frame. The matte finish of the graphite color unit that I have looks a bit dull, but I'm sure the olive, lavender and white trims will liven things up. This phone looks good overall, and although the back panel is still plastic, it should offer better resilience to cracks if dropped compared to glass, another change that's not very apparent is weight. The Samsung Galaxy S20 FE 5G weighed 190G, but the Galaxy S21 FE 5G is a lot lighter at 177G, which many users will appreciate. Coupled with a thickness of just 7.9mm and rounded edges everywhere, the Galaxy S21 FE 5G is a very comfortable phone to carry and use one-handed. The body is aluminium and the buttons along the right have a good tactile feel. There's no headphone jack or micro SD card slot, but you get a dual nano SIM tray and a USB Type C port on the bottom. The 6.4 inch AMOLED display is vibrant and has satisfying levels of brightness. It has a 120 Hz peak refresh rate and Corning Gorilla Glass Victus for protection. The glass is flat, which makes usage a lot easier, but the edges of the front panel are very slightly curved to meet the sides and back, which adds to the in hand comfort. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE 5G has an in-display fingerprint sensor and face recognition for biometric authentication. 
A fingerprint is the quickest way to unlock this phone. Face recognition is a bit slow and doesn't work too well in the dark, unless you have the phone really close to your face. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE 5G's packaging has also shed some weight as Samsung doesn't bundle a charger in the box anymore. In true flagship fashion, you only get a SIM eject tool and a USB Type-C to Type-C cable. If you use a high-wattage USB PD power adapter, you'll be able to fast charge the Galaxy S21 FE 5G at up to 25W. It's not super quick compared to what's possible today, but it's decent. The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is simple but stunning at the same time. I appreciate the sharp, squared-off angles, and I also like that the cameras aren't housed in a honking bump. They are more flush with the back of the handset. The overall look is minimalist and sleek. Another plus, the 6.8-inch display is gently curved, so it adds some aesthetic appeal without leading to accidental screen presses. My only complaint is that sometimes typing words or moving the cursor on the extreme left or right side of the screen can be a challenge. Despite having a slightly larger display than the 6.7-inch iPhone 13 Pro Max, the S22 Ultra is lighter at 8.07 ounces versus 8.5 ounces for Apple's handset. The Galaxy S22 Ultra feels solid and durable, and it should, as it's fortified with an armor aluminum frame and a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus back. We'll have to see how well this phone holds up in drop tests, though. The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra looks determined to top our best camera phone list and unseat Apple and Google. Our testing shows that the S22 Ultra is a very good camera phone, but it's quite the champ. The Galaxy S22 Ultra boasts a larger 2.4M pixel sensor for capturing more light and data, as well as a super clear glass lens for capturing nighttime videos without flares. You also get a 12MP ultrawide lens, plus dual 10MP telephoto cameras that combine to offer 10x optical zoom and 100x space zoom. For more comparisons, check out our Samsung Galaxy S22 vs iPhone 13 Pro Max low-light photography comparison. Samsung is also doubling down on computational photography with its camera system. There's adaptive pixel technology that combines 9 pixels into one for better images in the dark, enhanced AI high-res processing and 4x faster multi-frame processing. Google Pixel 6 Pro Mobile was launched on October 19, 2021. The phone comes with a 6.70-inch touchscreen display with a resolution of 1440 by 3120 pixels at a pixel density of 512 pixels per inch (PPI) and an aspect ratio of 19.5 to 9. Google Pixel 6 Pro is powered by a 2.8 GHz octa-core Google Tensor processor that features two cores clocked at 2.8 GHz and two cores clocked at 2.25 GHz. It comes with 12 GB of RAM. The Google Pixel 6 Pro runs Android 12 and is powered by a 5,003 mAh battery. The Google Pixel 6 Pro supports wireless charging, as well as proprietary fast charging. As far as the cameras are concerned, the Google Pixel 6 Pro on the rear packs a triple camera setup featuring a 50 megapixel primary camera with an f/1.85 aperture and a pixel size of 1.2 micron, a 12 megapixel camera with an f/2.2 aperture and a pixel size of 1.25 micron, and a 48 megapixel camera with an f/3.5 aperture and a pixel size of 0.8 micron. The rear camera setup has autofocus. It has a single front camera setup for selfies, featuring a 11.1 megapixel sensor with an f/2.2 aperture and a pixel size of 1.22 micron. Google Pixel 6 Pro is based on Android 12 and packs 128 gigabytes of inbuilt storage. The Google Pixel 6 Pro is a dual SIM, GSM and GSM mobile that accepts nano SIM and eSIM cards. The Google Pixel 6 Pro measures 163.90 by 75.90 by 8.90 mm, height x width x thickness, and weighs 210.00 grams. It was launched in cloudy white, sorta of sunny, and stormy black colors. Sensors on the phone include accelerometer, ambient light sensor, barometer, compass slash magnetometer, gyroscope, in-display fingerprint sensor, proximity sensor, and fingerprint sensor.
While the S21 Ultra and its 2022 sequel are design cousins at best, the S22 Plus resembles its 2021 counterpart to a T, though there are some striking improvements that make it a nicer object to hold as you go about your day. Specifically, the sides are sharper and easier to grip, and depending on the colorway, mirror shiny to contrast with the matte frosting of the rear glass, with the flat 6.6-inch .6 AMOLED display meeting the newly angular frame, the phone looks and feels more like an iPhone than any Galaxy device in recent memory, and that's a compliment. While a few grams lighter and slightly shorter than its predecessor, it's just a much nicer feeling object. I'm also happy to say that the screen is among the nicest I've ever seen on a phone, and I've yet to glimpse the one on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. The limited to a 1080p resolution, I'm constantly taken by the vividness and clarity of color and text, and it's immediately apparent that Samsung's claim of improved peak brightness, the company claims 1750 nits, but that's at a manually set extra brightness mode that shouldn't be necessary in all but the most sun glaring of summer days. The 120Hz panel lacks the LTPO bona fides of its more expensive counterpart, a recent marketing hiccup revealed that the phone can only go from 48Hz to 120, not a battery saving 10Hz as originally claimed, but this is an exceptional display nonetheless, the Galaxy S22 Plus is the first phone I've used with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SoC, but it's genuinely tough to tell the difference in performance between it and the Snapdragon 888 powered Galaxy S21 Ultra before it. Samsung has made some subtle changes to One UI 4.1 that improve the experience in minor but fun ways, I'm particularly fond of the new smart widgets, but if you've used a Samsung device with One UI 3 or 4, based on Android 11 or 12, respectively, things will feel pretty familiar, 